Hi guys, it's Lauren, Lauren Daisy. Welcome back to my channel and today we are doing another Pretty Little Lies video. How adorable is this little nail file that I got from the Warner Brothers tour? How freaking adorable is this? How adorable is this? I just had to, I just had to show it to you because I was like, that is everything. So yes, today we're doing another Pretty Little Lies video and it is going to be deciding which liar had it the worst. I feel like this is kind of widely debated online, you know, between the four of them, um, we kind of have people fighting for different corners of who they think had it the worst across the seven seasons. So today we're gonna go through each season one to seven, we'll talk about everything that happens to each liar in that season. And then we're gonna decide ultimately who had it the worst. A couple little context things before we get started. I haven't included Alison. That is purely just because she only shows up in season four. And by that point, so many things have happened to these poor girls that it wouldn't feel fair to compare her three seasons-ish to their full seven seasons. And also everything that goes down with Alison an archer and that whole thing, I think pretty much trumps a lot of what we're gonna talk about today, um, or at least equates to it. So I think that would just make it a whole lot more difficult. So yeah, not including Alison, um, but a moment for Alison because that gal has been through a lot, okay? She's been through a lot. Also, I'm only gonna be including things that were caused by A specifically. So things like Maya's death won't be included because she was killed by Lynn and James. It had nothing to do with A. I'm also only going to be including things that actually directly affected that liar. So things like threats by A that weren't acted on, those aren't going to count. So for example, A throughout the show threatens to expose Ezria multiple times, but never actually ends up doing it. They end up, you know, going to um, Arya's family themselves. So because that didn't actually happen to Arya, it was more just like the threat and the fear of it happening. I'm not going to be including that today. Um, and kind of other things like that, like a text that were kind of threatening to do something, but didn't actually end up doing it. That's not going to be included. It's only things that actually happened, actually had an impact on that character specifically. Another example of this would be um, when Jake gets those knives put into his punching bag um, and he kicks them and he injures himself. That will not be included because Arya doesn't actually find out about it. And therefore, even though it, the plan was carried out, it didn't end up affecting her or kind of hurting her in any way because she didn't end up knowing about it. However, things like Ashley's money being stolen after she had stolen it from the bank still counts because that created a rift between Hannah and her relationship um, and kind of led to other things that upset Hannah and, and, you know, the cupcakes and everything like that. So that does count. OK, I hope you're following along with me. I'm also only including things that affected that liar specifically. So things that affected the whole group, like group A texts and the dollhouse. Um, aside from like specific things that happened to each of them, but you know, like having to choose the buttons on the machines, they all had to do that um, when they get found with that shovel, um, you know, just things like that. Anything that was a group <laughs> struggle, those won't be included today. And mentally, we will just tack all of that stuff on to the individual things we're going to talk about today. So still keep those in mind, but they're going to be added on to this whole list of other things that affected each of the girls individually. Right, so we're going to kick things off with season one. And for season one, the only thing that I felt really truly affected Arya that was as a result of A was A sending the letter to Ella that exposes not only Byron's affair, but also the fact that Arya knew about it. So this was obviously a big plot point and A mailed the letter. It kind of blew up Arya's whole family and they ended up, you know, separating and it caused a big rift and also like sent Mike into a bit of a depression um, and was really hard for kind of all of them to deal with, um, which obviously Arya could have told her herself, but she didn't get that opportunity because A took it away from her. For Spencer, we have that her relationship with Alex was sabotaged by A because she thought that he should go to this tennis camp. He clearly expressed to her that he wasn't interested. And so she backed off, but A ended up applying 
on his behalf and he assumed it was Spencer and he broke up with her, which was so sad because I absolutely loved Alex. Also during, I don't know if it's like, was like the founders fair mm. or something like that, but there's the big fun fair and Spencer goes in and she ends up getting trapped with a crowbar, I think, um, in one of the little pods and she gets trapped in there by A and she ends up being rescued by Ian and Melissa. So obviously that was very distressing for her. And at that time, they were kind of making it seem like it was Ian. So Hannah, bless her heart, she had a lot, she had a lot of shit to go through in season one. So obviously the big one I would say is that she was hit by the car at Camp Mona, which left her with a broken leg. Then at the homecoming dance, I believe it is, she um, has to dance with Lucas. And every time she dances with him, she gets the money back from ashley you know stealing the money so like i said that's why i've included ashley's you know a stealing ashley's money because hannah has to do all these things to kind of get it back so she has to keep dancing with lucas which not only upsets lucas and obviously leads him on but also it and effectively ends her relationship with sean because he doesn't like that she keeps dancing with him it distanced them and then he obviously you know they break up like i said Ashley, the money gets stolen and because Hannah had that kind of, well, impromptu surprise party thing that she didn't know about, that was when the money got stolen and Ashley was annoyed at her for that. And then obviously that sells kind of a chain reaction. And probably one of the biggest ones um, that is really sad, it's a really sad scene, is when she has to try and get some of the money back by eating all of the pig cupcakes um, and then she gets told obviously to throw them up, which is so insanely it's such a sad scene and i really love that aria tried to be there for her um but it was just honestly i think it's up there with one of the worst maybe i know there's it gets quite it gets quite crazy towards season seven but definitely in season one it's one of the most hard-hitting scenes the fact that a would use hannah's eating disorder against her in this kind of twisted game um i do think was really sad and then lastly um, obviously she had to give Ella the tickets to the art exhibit where she knew that Ezra and Arya were going to be. Obviously she gets Caleb to something with the car and she ends up going with Byron. So that doesn't actually end up affecting Arya and Ezra, which is why I didn't include that in Arya's part and just in Hannah's because she was really the only one that dealt with that whole situation and the guilt of having to kind of expose Arya's relationship. And lastly, we have Emily. And again, I think one of the most kind of awful things that happens in season one is a kind of directly and indirectly outing her, um, which obviously was her when a part of herself that when she was ready to share it would have shared it. But again, that was taken away from her by A. So in the first instance, we have that A stole the Polaroid um, or the photo booth pictures of Emily and Maya and that kind of showed them kissing and a a ended up sending them to hannah and also to pam knowing that you know and then that obviously causes a huge rift in emily's relationship with pam because pam doesn't agree you know she's not very happy pride um it's all a little bit touch and go there for a minute so that's something that really ends up affecting Emily really deeply and obviously Hannah is really lovely about it and all her friends are when they find out about it but I just think it's such a shame that she didn't get to tell them herself and that's something that will always be the case that's kind of like a long standing effect of that is whenever she looks back on when she came out it will be that kind of horrible moment um, when Wilden finds the letter. So obviously A planted the letter that Emily had sent to Alison. Um, and if A hadn't planted it at the school, then Wilden wouldn't have been able to find it. So I think that was definitely one of the most brutal scenes of season one when he's kind of yelling at them and making Emily say how she felt about Alison. Um, and I think even though it's not A that actually does that, it's still as a result of A because A was the one that put the letter in the school in the first place. So in terms of season one, for me, it was kind of a toss up between Hannah and Emily because Emily's story does really upset me. I think it's really touching, but I decided to go with Hannah just for season one specifically because I think being hit by the car and the scene with the cupcakes and that whole kind of turmoil seems just so crazy, especially compared to what Arya um, and Spencer went through.
All right, moving in to season two. So for Arya, we have that she had to kind of confront Jackie, Ezra's ex-fiance, and threaten her with the fact that she knew her paper was plagiarized. Um, and this, I don't know, it kind, it didn't really work in her favor. It kind of like backfired on her um, because Jackie obviously didn't back down. So that was kind of a whole thing. But I think you're going to see there's kind of a pattern, um, which I know a lot of people talk about anyway with Pretty Little Lies, is that Arya, she gets it pretty tame. Compared to some of the things we're going to talk about on this list, there are some that obviously are really traumatic. And like I said, I'm not mentioning the dollhouse, but all the girls were affected by the dollhouse. But Arya's individual things that happened to her as a result of A, sometimes are just nowhere near as crazy especially with this episode. So this is from the mid-season finale of season two when they all get their dolls and they have to kind of go and do these different challenges. Um, and Spencer had to end her relationship with Toby. We're going to talk about that. Um, Hannah had to ruin her dad's wedding, but Arya just had to kind of make the woman that she wanted to go away anyway, go away. Um, and yeah, it like backfired, but ultimately... I don't think it really compares to the things that the other girls had to do. For Spencer, we have that Ian's phone gets planted in her bag by A, which then in turn makes Melissa think that Spencer is the one that's been messaging her and trying to mess with her, which obviously causes a huge rift between her and Melissa and really upsets her and the whole family dynamic. She also as part of her task from her doll, has to break up with Toby in order to keep him safe from A. And that's always a really sad scene to watch when she cries in the park after breaking up with him. Um, so yeah, that, one, that one's a tough watch. Now for Hannah for season two, I only have one thing written down, but it is a doozy, okay? It is a doozy. So she, her task was that she had to go and ruin Tom and Isabel's wedding. So obviously Tom is her father and Isabel is the woman that he cheated on Ashley with, but he is now marrying her. And prior to the wedding, he came to stay for a few nights and he and Ashley ended up sleeping together. And so Hannah has to tell Isabel about this and... Not only does it create huge problems with her dad, who she already has a really strange relationship with, but also with her mum for telling. And I think that was just, that whole thing was so incredibly harsh. Having to actually stop the wedding and tell her this, I think was just incredibly awful to make her do. Emily, bless her, she goes through the ringer. Okay, she goes through the ringer in season two. So firstly... A puts um, hormone growth drugs or whatever. It's like enhancement drugs, basically, um, into her cream that she's been using uh, for her shoulder pain or something like that. And because of that, the drugs are going into her system. They come up on her labs and Ren confronts her and says, you can't take these. And I think he ends up just letting it go, luckily. But had her parents found out about that or the team she would have been kicked off of the team which swimming is her whole life that was her whole career that was everything she wanted to do um and also the stress of a and just all of that consuming her with also the tryouts and everything it literally gives her a stomach ulcer so she was in she was in the pits okay she it was bad and that on top of it the fact that a also, like also, I don't know if you can be allergic to these things, but who knows? She was putting something foreign into Emily's body and it was going through her blood and changing her, like literally drugging her. That is crazy. That is crazy. Also in this season, we see A ruin another relationship and that is Emily and Samara. So Samara invites her friends over to Emily's house, you know, to meet her. And A tells her that she has to give one of Samara's friends her number. And because she does this, Samara breaks things off with her. A also ends up giving her a massage in this season, which is so creepy. Um, that one's just more of an invasion of privacy, but that would leave me scarred forever. I'd never get a massage again. She's also pressured to tell Ella about Ezra and Arya, just kind of like how Hannah was. And then also at the end, in this 
mid-season finale, her doll takes her to this barn. She goes in there, she gets locked in there with these car fumes and basically left for dead. She gets left for dead. That is actually crazy. If Alison hadn't saved her, she would have died in there. So ultimately, because of that, <laughs> I have decided to crown Emily as the one who had it the worst in season two. So for season three, we're going to kick it off with Arya again. And in this season, she has to come clean about the fact that she was the one that trashed Byron's office with Alison um, because they made her, they made, they made him think it was Meredith, but it was actually them. So she has to tell him about that, which kind of, yeah, creates a little bit of friction between her and Byron. And I think that ultimately leads to Meredith kind of spiraling and trapping Arya, you know, trying to make her sick. I think that kind of stems from this in a way of her trying to break um, her and Byron up. But I didn't include that because that was kind of Meredith's own doing, even if it was slightly triggered by a, you know, making this information come out. Um, I didn't really feel like enough of a link to add that in as well. Then on the Halloween train, she gets trapped in the box with Garrett's dead body which is absolutely traumatizing. I think that's probably one of, if not the most, aside from like the dollhouse and stuff, traumatizing things that happens to Arya. Imagine waking up next to a dead body. Oh my God. Obviously in season three, that is when we meet Malcolm, Ezra's son, who is then not his son. So it, I was debating whether to put this in Spencer or Arya's list, but I ended up putting it in both. And that's because A, trick Spencer into telling Ezra about Malcolm before Arya can, which, creates a divide between her and Ezra. So I did include it still because it does directly affect Arya and her relationship um, and also her friendship with Spencer. So there's that. And then also, again, I was a bit dubious about in including this as well, um, but Spencer ends up abducting Malcolm and this obviously affects Arya, but then Ezra doesn't actually end up finding out about it. So it doesn't create any kind of rift between them but it does upset Arya and her friendship with Spencer. So I feel like that's that one's kind of up to you if you want to include that one or not. Season three is Spencer's season. My God, this poor girl is in the trenches. So she, all kinds of stuff happens to her in season three. Where do we even, where do we even begin? She is attacked by the Queen of Hearts on the Halloween train and then is ultimately saved by Paige. But again, I think... Had she not been saved, probably would have been killed by the Queen of Hearts. But that one, again, I don't know if... Because Wilden was the Queen of Hearts. But I can't remember if he was specifically working for A or if he was just had his own agenda. So maybe that one doesn't count. But if he was working like with the A-team and stuff, then it would count. I need to rewatch Pretty Little Lies. A also sabotages her being the team captain for, I can't remember what it's called in America. All the smart girlies, the smart guys, are, you know, they, it's like general knowledge quizzes and stuff, I think. Um, and Spencer is part of the team and so is Mona. And they kind of ends up sabotaging that for her and Mona becomes team captain. Obviously, one of the biggest ones in season three is finding out that Toby is A and then also making her believe that Toby is dead. And this sends her into a whole spiral. It's what puts her into Radley and just absolutely shakes her and traumatizes her for this season. And we also have her then being recruited for the A-team, having to abduct Malcolm, having to betray her friends in order to find out, you know, about Toby. And it's a whole web of lies. Like I said, she gets tricked into telling Ezra about Malcolm. She also gets told that the liars will be hurt by A if she tells them about Toby being on the A-team, so she has to keep that to herself. And obviously that kind of eats her up inside. And last but not least, she's also locked in the steam room of her house and left for dead basically until Arya comes in and saves her. So bless her heart, she really, she really was going through it. Hannah um, kind of struggles this season a lot as well. Firstly, A gets Caleb's mum into a car accident. Um, I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure that was like, at least it was insinuated to have been A, if not confirmed that it was A. 
and to try and drive a wedge between her and Caleb and again kind of perpetuate that idea that you have to break up with these people in order to protect them like you cannot as long as you are close to these people they are in danger also on the Halloween train it's not really clear but when she sees that person that looks like Caleb they're obviously kind of like dancing and close and stuff which then when it turns out to not be him is incredibly creepy because he was kind of all up in her business, even though it wasn't him. A also frames Jamie, Caleb's dad, for stealing the um, money and stealing the bell from the church, which kind of, kind of ruins his relationship with Caleb. And then also she has to tell Caleb and it becomes a whole thing. Um, and lastly, A puts Wilden's car into Hannah's garage after Ashley hits him with her car. For Emily, she is drugged and taken to Alison's grave to make it look like she was the one that dug it up. And obviously because she couldn't remember, she thought maybe she had, and that was a whole thing that must have been very traumatic for her. And then also obviously A makes her think that Toby is dead along with Spencer. I feel like it doesn't really affect Ari and Hannah so much, but obviously Spencer was his girlfriend and Emily was one of his best friends. So it really affects her on top of the grief she's already dealing with, with the death of Maya. So for season three, I decided it had to be Spencer that had it the worst. It was just brutal. This season was absolutely brutal for her. Season four, so Arya has to stay away from Ezra to protect him because A is basically threatening to ruin his life. So even though A doesn't actually go through with it, she still has to break up with him and that's why I included it because that was really hard for her to do. A then almost hits her with their car. Um, so again, another attempted murder. And they also put bees into Ella's car and Arya has to watch as her mum, you know, is kind of attacked by these bees and in distress. And that is really hard for her, seeing her mum kind of post this bee attack. Um, so yeah, that kind of instills the fear in her as well that anyone is, that she loves is a target of A. For Spencer, we have that A actually sends her ADHD pills while she is trying to quit and she's trying to kind of overcome this problem that she has with them. And also that during the wedding fashion show, A puts finger bones into Spencer's corset. For Hannah, we have a couple different things, bless her. So she gets dental work done, which is done by A. Imagine how invasive. And A ends up putting a note in between her teeth. That was wild. That's, that is some good TV, I tell you. A also puts Ashley's phone into Wilden's casket so Hannah has to like go in there and find it and Hannah's mum is kind of being framed for Wilden's murder. She is arrested for Wilden's murder, which obviously takes a huge toll on Hannah, thinking that her mum's going to go away forever. And A also calls the police on Hannah while she is burying her dad's gun. So that is a whole can of worms. Lastly, we have Emily and A tries to hit her with their car and she... I think she jumps out of the way or someone knocks her out of the way or something like that. She lands on a rock and she injures her shoulder, which kind of puts a halt on her swimming. A also calls family services on her parents to insinuate that they are bad parents and have her taken away from them. She takes a video that is supposed to, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's supposed to be evidence basically for the police. And A ends up swapping it with a note that has her handwriting on it and it is a video of someone in a red coat wearing an Emily mask and they're holding up a sign that says guilty. So obviously that, that did not look good in the eyes of the police. Then A sends a car through Emily's living room. Luckily no one was injured, but it completely wrecks her living room um, and her mum is traumatized, she is traumatized by that. And last but not least, we have another attempted murder on the list. So when they go to this factory, I think it is, or maybe it's somewhere in Ravenswood, um, they Emily gets locked in a coffin and she gets sent um, on a conveyor belt to basically be sawed in half. Sawed in half. And the girls end up saving her, but if they hadn't, she would have died. 
So for this season, it was a real toss up on who had it the worst. I decided to go with Emily because of the attempted murder and the fact that the injury of her shoulder kind of stopped her swimming, um, which is like her whole thing. That was what her scholarship was based on, everything like that. But Hannah was definitely a very, very close second with everything that happened with her and Ashley. But I just felt, obviously it was really hard for Hannah, but it was also incredibly hard for Ashley. And that was more kind of things that was happening to Ashley. Whereas with Emily, these things happened to her directly. So for season five, obviously we're going to kick off with Aria. And she gets stapled into like plastic wrap. This is done by A in order to steal back Mona's laptop. This happens in uh, Ezra's like cafe that he is building. Then when Arya writes this really damning letter about Ezra, because she knows that Jackie is going to read it and hopefully will get her accepted into Talmadge, I think it's called or something, um, university. The A gets a hold of the letter and ends up printing it. They print it on a bookmark. They print it on the receipt roll at the cafe and force Arya to tell him about this letter that she wanted to keep a secret. And that ultimately leads to them splitting up because he isn't sure that the things that she, he basically thinks that the things that she wrote in her letter are kind of true and that she should have the chance to experience these things and go on kind of without him, at least for now. A then at the abandoned ice cream factory locks her in a freezer and again had Emily not broken her out she would have frozen to death. A also steals their blood or was that confirmed to be Mike? Or Mike just had to take the blood to someone to learn stuff about Mona. Again, I can't remember exactly, but their blood gets stolen from the blood drive. And also she gets sent a cow tongue. That is nasty. That is nasty. A cow tongue right on her doorstep. So for Spencer, she gets locked in a um, horse stable where her eye ends up getting injured and it's all swollen um, because the horse kind of loses control. Again, she is also locked in the freezer with Aria and only gets saved by Emily. So again, another attempted murder and her blood is also stolen. And lastly, um, A ends up putting a vial of blood into her purse. So when she goes to interview at Oxford Uni, the blood bursts in her bag and it drips out of the bag and all over the chair in her interview and ruins her interview, which is so sad because that would have been so cool to see after the time jump if Spencer had gone to Oxford or Cambridge and really been able to thrive there, but that gets ruined by A. So Hannah, bless her, we've got another tough season for Hannah. Um, a sends a note to Zach, Ella's fiance, which basically indicates that Hannah is interested in him, and that leads to a really awful altercation between them when he kind of tries to hit on her and makes her really uncomfortable. And that also then had a knock-on effect because when she told Arya about it, Arya wasn't happy with her, and that created a rift with her friendship and just further pushed her into her spiral that she was going down in this season anyway. She was also knocked out by A while snooping around Allison's house during the Winter Wonderland Ball or whatever that thing was called. And she also went on that college trip and she had the college bear and then it got stuffed with guts. But that also could have been that creepy kid that she met when she was there. So maybe that wasn't A, but... It was very weird, all her car doors were open and that would have literally terrified me. Caleb also gets locked in a kiln and I wasn't really sure whether to include this or not because Hannah isn't there when it happens and he also is, Spencer is able to save him and he is fine. But I guess because she obviously does find out about it, that fear of something happening to him further kind of stresses her out and does have an effect on her ultimately. So Kind of take it or leave it with that one. When it comes to the storage unit with the mysterious barrel in it, it is rented in Hannah's name, which I don't know why they felt the need to target Hannah that much, but they did and they put it in Hannah's name. They're trying to obviously frame her. She is also kind of taunted about um, Ashley sleeping with Jason when Arya gets tricked sort of into delivering flowers to the house. And that's kind of, I don't know if that's how she finds out about it or that just kind of further like 
just rub soul onto the wound of that whole situation. Her blood is also stolen. I th yeah, Emily's is the only one that isn't. When she signs up for the beauty pageant, A puts Kate's name on the list, which sends Hannah into a spiral and basically makes her lose her chances of winning because she just goes too overboard and is too stressed and focused on trying to beat Kate when Kate wasn't even entering to begin with. And then lastly, we have that A literally framed her for murder. Okay, framed her for murder, or at least being the accomplice of Alison, who supposedly killed Mona. They put Hannah's blood onto Mona's jeans, and she ends up being arrested and put into jail with Alison. And finally for Emily, we have that she was also locked in the horse stable with Spencer, but she didn't end up getting injured. It was just kind of, she was locked in there as well. So obviously for this season, I've had to go with Hannah. She goes through so much in this season and is absolutely awful. Okay, so for season six, we have that Arya is forced by A to dye her hair. She initially says no, and then A cuts all of her hair off and makes her dye it. She also gets sent a doll of her, I think it's supposed to be of her, with the eye stabbed in as kind of like a threat, which, good lord. And then when she enters into the photo contest and has her work displayed, a swaps it out for pictures of them when they were in the dollhouse and they were lying on the kind of in that morgue. So that must have been incredibly traumatizing for them. And also towards once we've already had the time jump, Arya gets burnt on the arm because A kind of like A kind of overrides Lucas's smart home or something and turns the fireplace all the way up which catches Arya and she gets, I think, like, second degree burns or something like that on her forearm. For Spencer in season six, she gets made to believe that she hurt somebody because Spencer has a lot of psychological trauma that goes on throughout this show and A really plays into that. But one of the big things is that she believes that she hurt someone on the night of Alison's death because she doesn't really remember things. She was taking her pills. And A plays into this by covering her hands in blood and making her think once again that she had hurt somebody and, you know, wasn't aware of it and everything like that. But we find out later that that isn't true and the blood was just planted there, but it really messes with Spencer's mind. And then also in this season, she has to take the fall basically for sabotaging Yvonne because A is the one that sabotages Yvonne, Spencer, um, Toby's new girlfriend. You know, she's on the opposite political team, so they make it look like Spencer tried to sabotage her, when in reality she didn't, it was A, but there was no way that she could kind of blame anyone else. I think maybe Caleb takes the fall for it, or something like that, but Spencer gets a lot of heat for it in the, in the moment. At the very end of season six, A, D does abduct Hannah. That was kind of the only thing, really, in this season that A does directly to her. They do kind of, like I said, sabotage her bridal shower, but Arya is there anyone that's injured there? Things tend to kind of happen more with her and Jordan and the whole Spalab thing rather than anything A related. And unless I just can't remember it, I don't think we ever see a scene specifically from her in the dollhouse, or if it is, it's just kind of her stressing out in her room because she ends up, you know, redecorating her whole room and everything like that. But yeah. We don't see any direct flashbacks aside from obviously the game where they have to choose, but all of them end up doing that. And lastly, we have Emily, who she um, has her eggs stolen. She donates her eggs um, to get some money and they end up being, I think, well, they're made to believe that they were destroyed by A, but then they were actually taken. And also A tries to run her over repeatedly. So add another attempted murder to the list. So for season six, I decided to go with Hannah and Emily joint because Hannah being abducted at the end and being taken to the church is obviously very harrowing. And Emily having her egg stolen is just such an incredible invasion of privacy and just horrific. All right. 
So now we're down to the final season. So for season seven, we're going to kick it off with Arya again. So she is threatened with this police report that she actually filled in to submit against Ezra, but then she decided not to. And A says, I will submit this report if you don't join the A-team. So because she ends up joining the A-team, that sets off a whole spiral. It fractures her relationship with her friends. She has to trash Alison and Emily's um, uh, baby, like nursery, which is really sad. And she also has to expose the whole thing with Spencer's family by leaving that phone there that plays the message that they end up hearing. And yeah, like I said, that really fractures her relationship with her friends and is really sad. So for Spencer, she is shot. So we have another attempted murder. But I think, I can't remember who this was. Was it Alex Drake? I think it was Alex Drake that shot her. Um, but... Yeah, that's kind of a bit dubious, I guess. I'm pretty sure it was Alex Drake that shot her, which means that it was A that shot her. I'm pretty sure it wasn't Jenna. I don't think it was Jenna. Because um, Jenna gets, like, abducted or something. Anyway, so that happens, and she has to heal from that and everything. And then, obviously, she finds out the truth that Mary Drake is her mum, which causes a huge rift with her family and just with her own self and who she kind of believed that she was for all these years. She's also made to visit Toby while he's in the hospital, after his car accident, which she didn't really want to do because it's kind of, it's not, it wasn't really the right place to, but she ends up going anyway, and he does. And lastly, obviously, she is held captive by Alex in the series finale and left down there. And is Alex is going to try and take over her life, but obviously they end up getting out and foiling her plan. <laughs> so for Hannah. She obviously is abducted by AD, which is, again, one of the worst things that happens in this show with the cattle prod that she's shocked with, the cold water that gets thrown on her. I think this is so incredibly crazy. It's so harsh. It's so traumatizing. And I don't really know why they did it. I don't know what Alex Drake's motivation was to torment Hannah like this. She's left with scars. She is absolutely traumatized from this and it's just so extreme compared to other things that happen on the show. A also ends up sabotaging her business deal I'm pretty sure that she has to start her own fashion line and Caleb also gets gassed um, but again yeah that's just more of a loved ones in trouble affects them kind of kind of thing. And lastly for Emily she actually A, end up, a ends up actually helping her out and getting her a 92 on a chemistry test I don't really know why. Maybe it's just because, like, she can hold it over her that she, like, cheated or something. Maybe she just felt bad for her because of all the shit that's happened to her. Who knows? And lastly, she take a takes her eggs, fertilizes them um, with Ren as the dad, and then puts them into Allison. So basically forces her to become a parent. And that is just so incredibly horrific. That whole storyline is absolutely wild so for season seven again i've put that it's hannah and emily i think the abduction by ad is horrific and also the stealing of emily's eggs again is horrific so i actually did ask you guys on reddit who you believed had it the worst and you guys voted so i'm going to tell you the results of that poll now we had 5% of you that said that Arya had it the worst, which I would be so interested to know why. Um, because I love Arya. She's my gal. She's my favorite liar. Lucy Hale, love of my life. But compared to the other stuff, like when I'm reading this out, it's nowhere near. It's nowhere near. Obviously, she is, again, traumatized by everything that's happened with A, the dollhouse, everything like that. But individually, it is, it is not really on the same level. So I wasn't surprised that she got the lowest amount of votes with 5%. Emily came next and she had 22%. And people in the comments were kind of talking about the same things that I have. And I was surprised that she didn't actually get more votes. Then lastly, Spencer had 32% of the votes and Hannah had 41% of the votes. This didn't really surprise me. I think maybe on some level... Emily's kind of lack of popularity put her further down on the list because 
people love Spencer and they love Hannah. And I think because of that, remember the awful things that happened to them a bit more. Whereas Emily's kind of like fade in the background a little bit. But yeah, ultimately you guys decided that you thought Hannah had it the worst across the seven seasons. And I do think that that is a valid conclusion. But let's talk about the conclusion that I came to. So at the end of our little roundup of all the seasons, we have Hannah having it the worst in season one, Emily having it the worst in season two, Spencer having it the worst in season three, Emily having it the worst in season four, Hannah having it the worst in season five, and then for season six and seven, we had a tie between Hannah and Emily for both of those seasons. For me personally, it was really hard to choose between Hannah and Emily because they go through some really awful things in this show. I do believe there is also a strong case for Spencer as well, but I just kind of felt that a lot of the awful things that happened to her are as a result of outside circumstances, things like her family tree, things like her um, pill addiction and so on. So in terms of directly from A and being targeted by A, I think she is slightly less so, but definitely still go th definitely still goes through a lot. But I think, like I said, it's definitely a lot of that comes from stuff that's out of her control and stuff that's used against her that isn't really necessarily to do with her all the time. I almost chose Hannah because of the AD abduction in season seven. I do think that's absolutely horrific. But ultimately, I decided to go with Emily. I think that Emily had it the worst in this show. Firstly, she's outed by A when that was a part of herself that, like I said, she should have had the opportunity to share when she was ready. And forever, her experience of coming out will be this awful thing that happened to her. They also tried to sabotage her relationship with her parents multiple times. We have obviously sending Pam the pictures of her and Maya, which caused the whole thing. Um, sending the car into their house, literally crashing into their house and also calling the Child Protective Services on them and trying to have them painted as bad parents and potentially get Emily taken from them. She almost dies at the hands of A in this show four times, okay? Four times she almost dies as a result of A. So firstly, we have when A leaves her in the barn with the car fumes, absolute madness, and Alison obviously ends up rescuing her from that one. Secondly, we have that she is almost hit by that car and ends up injuring her shoulder. Thirdly, we have when she was locked in that coffin and almost sawed in half, almost sawed in half. And then fourthly, we have when, again, she was almost repeatedly hit by a car. Multiple times. Until the, she, the car just gave up and left. <laughs> so not only did A tried to sabotage her swimming career by literally drugging her, drugging a 17 year old girl or maybe 16 at this time, I'm not even sure. But then they also, as a result of trying to hit her with her car, her shoulder was injured and this meant she couldn't swim anymore, which not only took away her scholarship that she wanted, so she couldn't go to the uni she wanted, but that took away her whole career. Who knows? Maybe she would have swam in the olympics or she would have who knows what she would have done but she'll never know because a completely ruined it for her but i think the true nightmare icing on top of this horrendous cake is having her eggs stolen and put into her friend because that is just next level that is next level. And I know I said I wasn't including non-AA related things, and I'm still not, but things like losing her dad, losing Wayne, losing Maya, almost being killed by Lyndon James, and then having to kill him to survive, just to name a few, definitely makes me sympathise with her, along with all the stuff she had to deal with from A. Overall, I do think, obviously, all of the liars will come away from the A saga with trauma and will be affected by it for the rest of their lives. But I think the one person who truly has had their life changed forever and impacted by A has to be Emily. At the end of the show, we see that everyone kind of ends up where you might think they would. 
Um, Arya ends up marrying Ezra, which absolutely not. But I guess if you watch the first episode, maybe you would think that would happen. Who knows? And then, and she's a writer. They're having a film made, all this stuff. They're going to adopt. They've kind of, you know, they're, they're happy in their little life. And Hannah ends up marrying Caleb, which is really sweet. She's happy. She, I think, is going to start, you know, doing her fashion stuff. And she's also pregnant. And Spencer, which she should have had a better ending, but that's a video for another day, um, is starting to reconnect with Toby and sort of get back together with him. So all sort of things that the girls would have probably gone on to do anyway. Spencer has her political career, Hannah has her fashion design, you know, all this, all this really lovely stuff in amongst the rest. Whereas Emily truly goes through so much. Not being able to get her scholarship meant she couldn't go to the uni she wanted. She really struggles at uni, especially when her dad dies. She doesn't have the money. She doesn't end up finishing school. She doesn't have the career that she really wanted. I mean, obviously she probably enjoys being the swim coach, but is that what she wanted to do forever? I don't know. And then to top it all off, she has to become a parent when she didn't really want to. She obviously comes around to it and seems to love being a mum when we see her in that little flash forward and she's with Alison and she's engaged. But is that really the way that she would have wanted her life to go had these awful things not happened? And if she had been able to choose when she wanted to have babies, if she would have been able to choose who she wanted to have them with. And I think the babies really bring Alison and Emily back together and maybe they wouldn't have without that. So maybe she would have been with someone else. And I think definitely based on all of that, everything that we've talked about today, I have to say, in my opinion, please let me know down in the comments who you would have chosen instead. But for me, in my opinion, I think who had it the worst? Which pretty little liar had it the worst? I'm going to give it to Emily Fields. That is my official ruling and decision. Please let me know in the comments who you think it was. Like I said, I think there's definitely a strong case for Hannah. She would have been my next pick and almost was. And I think there's also a strong case for Spencer. I don't think there's really a strong case for Arya. But if you want to, please please let me know in the comments why you would pick Arya if you did vote for her. And yeah, I would absolutely love to hear your theories and your reasonings and everything like that down below. Ultimately, I just think her life was altered forever. Yeah, those things will just, will never change. So bless Emily. I love her. And she really, the girls go through a lot in this show. They really do. But make sure that you like, comment and subscribe to my channel for more PLL, Gossip Girl, all kinds of all kinds of videos coming up. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.